In a class, a female voice narrates that every story about superheroes starts within a hero's boring and ordinary world until they find out about their powers and start playing around with them. But this is not going to be a usual story rather than a story about the sassiest superheroine that has ever lived. The teacher asks the class if they want to join any clubs in the school, and Claire says she wants to join the drama club. Claire joins the drama club where an auditioning is taking place and says her passion in life is acting. She also narrates that her superpower is she can see people's feeling, which manifests in the form of colors in her eyes. For example, when she sees a yellow color around someone, it means that person is feeling confident, or when she sees an orange color, it means that person is feeling happiness. She adds that she uses her powers to get what she wants, like being the lead actress for the school's play, but when she meets with her crush, she says he is the only person whose emotions she can't see. The next day, an old and ugly picture of Claire's is leaked by someone in order to ridicule her, and Claire puts her observation skills to work since her powers have been temporarily exhausted from overuse. That's not the end of it since it seems Claire is a villain whose goal is to make her quit from the play. She gets a phone call and a high-pitched voice says they have a humiliating clip of Claire's, and they are going to leak it if Claire doesn't give up on her lead role in the play. Claire becomes obsessed about it and she suspects everyone participating in the play, since they all have a motivation to kick her out of it. While she's trying to find out who her villain is, the humiliating clip of hers is leaked, and everybody looks and laughs at it, which results in Claire trying to take everyone's phones away. She realizes her crush, Pun, is watching her like she is a crazy person, and that hurts her even more, making her run away. Later, she meets with her friend Korn, who tells her she shouldn't worry too much about it, and that if Pun truly likes her, he will not care about that clip either. Claire has been removed from the play and replaced by her close friend Pang, but that doesn't stop her from crashing the play when it starts and revealing that she knows Pang was the one who set her up. Pang admits it and tells her she did what she did because Claire treats people like garbage. They have a slight confrontation on stage and Pang is taken away, leaving Claire on stage to continue and complete the play. When she is done, she has a talk with Pun and thanks him for giving her all the information on Pang. Pun tells her she is cute when she wears her glasses, and Claire is finally able to see a pink color emanating from Pun, which is definitely a good sign for them. Pun starts presenting himself to the board of teachers while they tell him he is the most perfect student they have ever seen, before they start arguing in which event should he participate in the student competition. Pun gives them the solution to it, and tells them he would like to participate in all of the events of the competition. Later on, he meets with Claire and they dance tango together. When they reach their final move, Claire expects him to kiss her, but Pun lifts her up. Claire complains about it and tells him he should have kissed her, but Pun says practice is practice and should be taken seriously, which in turn makes Claire explain that even though he is a super perfectionist, he should at least enjoy the time they spend dancing together. Throughout the film, we see that Pun is occupied with lots of activities, and he strives to be the best he can in all of them, but he faces some issues which might have something to do with depression. Pun's teacher, Mr. Palm, is worried about him and tells him he should not use too much of his potential for doing all of the stuff he does, and it seems like his words hold some truth since later on, Claire meets with Pun and realizes that the hard effort he is putting is taking a toll on him. Claire tells him he has to stop pushing himself too hard, but Pun replies he told everyone he's going to compete and he can't stop now. Teacher Palm has a talk with the school's headmaster and tells him Pun's skills are based upon imitation, and that's how he is able to learn things quickly, but that also comes with its side effects. Pum has gathered enough information on Pun, and states that Pun is suffering from a multiple personality disorder. There are multiple personalities sleeping inside him, and each of them is based on an emotion or general state, such as paranoia. Pun's condition worsens to a point where he tries to fight his imaginary personalities, while actually hurting himself. But thankfully, Claire is in the right place at the right moment, and she stops him. Pun resigns from his duty as a head student and from all competitions, and he promises Claire he will take the time he needs to recover without using his super ability for learning. In a next scene, Teacher Palm announces that Wave, a student who happens to be Pun's biggest rival, is going to be the new head student. Wave suggests a new rule and places the students that have not yet discovered what their super abilities are on cleaning duty, so that they have more time to concentrate and reflect on themselves, a suggestion that is accepted by Teacher Palm. The headmaster meets one of those students, Pang, and asks him for a favor, which is to deliver a letter to another female student, Mon. Pang meets with her and we see that Mon is a specialist in martial arts and can easily defeat all of the other students in the club. Pang decides to stay around for a while and he becomes a witness to a weird incident when one of the girls that are part of the martial arts club goes insane, to the point where Mon has to hit her in order to stop her. Everybody thinks that a mysterious student called Duke is the one who drugs people somehow, 
but Teacher Palm calls Mon and tells her they found a stimulant pheromone on her towel, and it was her sweat that made people act like zombies. The problem becomes worse when everyone that was previously in the same room as Mon becomes polluted by her pheromones and starts becoming aggressive. That is until they stumble upon Mon herself, who uses her martial arts skills to neutralize them. This whole time, Mon's good friend Art stands by her, but eventually he becomes affected by her pheromones as well and starts taking ill of her. He tells her she is a cheater because of her super ability, but that's unfair for the others who put real work into being good martial artists. Art attacks her and Mon has no choice but to disarm him and knock him down, before she meets with Teacher Palm, who is the one to explain to her that her pheromones transfer through all of her body fluids. Pang walks in the gym and sees one of the other students of the club being in a frenzy and beating up Duke. Pang tries to stop him, but the other students start blaming him for all of his miseries and beating him up as well. Pang gets angry at some point and grabs his arm, telling him that if he is going to be that much angry, he should start bumping his head on the wall until he drops dead. The student follows his command and bumps his head on a steel post while Pang can't understand what is happening. Eventually, Pang runs near him and yells at him to stop, which really makes him stop, which in turn makes Pang understand that maybe his super ability is ordering others to do stuff. Later, Teacher Palm is keeping Pang and Korn after the class and expecting them to tell him anything, but the two of them tell him nothing. When they are left alone, Pang asks Korn how long he thinks Palm is going to keep them there, and Korn replies he is probably expecting Pang to tell him what happened in the gym incident. Right after that, we see that Korn is occupied with taking pictures of his friend Claire, who he is in love with, but that doesn't last long since there is another girl that comes into his life, Koi. Koi is a part of the journalist club, and she tells Korn that she wants to expose the gifted program of the school due to what happened to her friend from the journalist club in the gym incident, where she got attacked by those students in a frenzy. Korn and Koi spend more and more time together, and they reach a point where they kiss, and Koi helps him make a visual transformation by dyeing his hair blonde. Claire approaches Korn and tells him that his girlfriend is trying to expose the gifted program, and that's why she is spending time with him, which has the opposite effect on Korn and feels tired of everyone trying to mess with his life and control it. He takes Koi with him and shows her all the secrets of the gifted program, while being unaware that Koi is using a USB flash drive to copy the confidential files. Korn runs after Koi along with Claire and Pang, but Koi is actually stopped by Wave, who hacks into her computer and deletes all of her files. Korn asks her if she pretended to like him, and Koi replies she really likes him, but she can't just pass on these secrets that hurt her friend. When all of the students are caught, Pang tries to use his ability on Palm and tell him to not expel Korn. The next day, Palm walks into the class and announces that Korn is on leave, to Pang's surprise. He asks Pang if he has anything to tell him, but Pang stays silent. However, Palm knows that Pang has been able to discover his superpower. All students are suddenly called in the middle of the night for their midterm exam. This exam is going to be like no other, and the headmaster announces that the student who will cross the line first will have the power to ask the school for something, and the school won't be able to deny it. The exam involves the gifted students solving the mystery of a dead girl, a real event that happened in the school some years back. The students need to share their clues via a walkie-talkie, and they will be accredited with point each time they find a clue. At first, the plot indicates that the murdered girl, Nisha, had a female friend who was jealous of her all the while she was being relentlessly bullied. The other girl, Whippoe, poisoned Nisha, and then she tried to poison the whole school through a water tank, but Nisha was a gifted student and she survived the poisoning. While at the same time, she warned the school about the poison in the water tank, which resulted in Whippoe being arrested. Nisha was the first gifted student of the school, and that's when the gifted program started. But as it seems, the story is not finished, and Pang finds a special clue the next morning, which allows him to uncover what happened in reality. There was indeed a dead girl at that incident, but the girl was Whippoe, who was pushed over the roof by Nisha because she was mad at her friend for trying to poison her. Pang has a talk with the headmaster, who tells him the moral of that story was that he has to protect gifted students from the jealousy that inferior students feel towards them. Pang disagrees with him and tells him that everybody is equal and they should be treated as equals, because he thinks this lack of fair treatment is what causes the problem in the first place. He adds that he sympathizes with Whippoe because she was being bullied for the fact that people believed she was not as good as Nisha. The episode ends with the headmaster saying that his system is correct and fair towards the people who really deserve it, and tells Pang that he will use his ability one day to lead inferior people to the future. Subscribe and hit that like button to help our channel grow. Turn the notifications on so you won't miss any of our new videos. Thanks for watching.